Margaret Bruce here to talk to you about slicing polyhedrons. Don't you mean how to get more cake? What? No! Let's start with what kind of a slice we're talking about. Not exactly. No, not that. Not that either. Oh, a slice of cake. That's more like it. Time for cake? Not yet. A slice is just a cross section of a three dimensional figure. Lots of things can be sliced open to reveal what is inside. Cross sections are pretty common in science class, but what do they mean in math? Well, in math, a slice is the two-dimensional shape that is produced when a three-dimensional figure is cut, like this. Actually, there are three ways to slice a three-dimensional shape. The first is horizontally. A bagel or sandwich roll is sliced horizontally, which means parallel to the base. In order to fill a flat cake, it is also sliced horizontally, again, parallel to the base. Did someone say cake? Not now. When a slice is made parallel to the base of any prism, the resulting shape is congruent to the base. When a slice is made parallel to the base of any pyramid, the resulting slice is the same shape as the base, only smaller. Next, let's talk about vertical slices, which are slices perpendicular to the base. When cake is sliced to be served, it is sliced perpendicular to the base. Cake? No. When prisms are sliced perpendicular to the base, a rectangle is produced, regardless of the shape of the base. When pyramids are sliced perpendicular to the base, two different shapes are possible. If the slice goes through the apex, which is the top vertex, then the slice is a triangle. If the slice goes not through the apex, but through only one edge, again, the slice is a triangle. When pyramids are sliced perpendicular to the base, not through the apex, but through two edges, the result is a trapezoid. You're probably thinking, what about diagonal slices? No, I'm thinking, when are we going to have cake? Seriously? I'm trying to do something here. And seriously, I want cake. As I was saying, diagonal slices are cuts that are not perpendicular nor parallel to the base. So how will we know what shape we will get with a diagonal slice? Let's look at this logically. Here are several parallel and perpendicular slices from before that produce triangles. Here are a few more ways to get triangles from diagonal slices. What do all of these have in common? All of these slices pass through three faces. That is why a triangle was formed.
Let's look at the quadrilaterals we've already created to see what is going on there. We produce rectangles, squares, and trapezoids. With a diagonal slice, we can even get a kite. So what do all of these have in common? That's right, all of these slices pass through four faces, so the result must be a quadrilateral. The number of faces a slice passes through determines the shape of the slice. So to get a pentagon, slice through five faces. A rectangular pyramid only has five faces, so the most number of sides a slice of a rectangular pyramid can have is five. That means that with rectangular prisms, which includes a cube, it is possible to get a hexagon because there are six faces. So once again, slices can be vertical, perpendicular to the base, horizontal, parallel to the base, or even diagonal. But no matter which way you slice it, the shape of the slice is determined by the number of faces it passes through. I hope this information helps you to understand better slicing polyhedrons. And it can help you get more cake, too. What are you talking about? I'll show you. Can I have a slice? Sure. Can I have a slice perpendicular to the base? Sure. See? More cake. Yeah, mom, just one slice.